So you're thinking about moving to Greenville, South Carolina, and you're worried about the pros and cons. I'll be honest with you, I would be worried too. If I was moving to a whole new area, the good and bad would definitely be things I needed to know. So in this video, I'm gonna unpack some of those and some ones that most people don't mention that are important to our family that I think you should know about too. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is about the Greenville, South Carolina area and all of the surrounding areas around it, then make sure you hit subscribe and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about everything in the Greenville area. I'm Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team and we specialize in helping people just like you from all over the world relocate to our beautiful area. So whether it's a month from now or a year from now, don't forget to reach out to us. All of my information is below and we'd like to help you make a smooth transition to the upstate. So let's go ahead and unpack all the pros and cons of Greenville, South Carolina. So as I unpack the pros and cons, we're gonna start with the pros. And I wanna make sure you know, I'm not doing these in any particular order because certain pros will matter to certain people in different ways. And some may mean a lot to us and they may not mean a lot to you, but they still are a pro to you. So one of the pros that I'm gonna go over, the first one I'll go over is revitalization and building of our development areas. So what I mean by that is I'm standing at Unity Park. Unity Park was finished last year in 2023 and it's tons of green space, it has the commons, it has a playground, it has a theater area, and it also is where the Swamp Rabbit Trail runs through. The Swamp Rabbit Trail connects to places like the zoo, Cleveland Park, uh, Traveler's Rest, all the way down to Furman. It can, uh, about to, not yet, it's about to, be a Bridgeway Station in Malden and in Fountain Inn. So that is in one of the projects and the Envision project for Fountain Inn as well as the Greenville projects that they have going on. These projects all started for Greenville in the 1990s with building out the Peace Center and revitalizing the downtown. And the downtown area wasn't an area that most people would wanna to go to in the early 90s. It probably was a place they would not at all want to go to, okay? Now you have gorgeous restaurants, and when I say gorgeous, you would normally say, wouldn't you say tasty restaurants? Absolutely, they're tasty and they're phenomenal. Many of them have won awards, but when you walk in them, you're in all of the surroundings. It's just a very pleasant environment. It is so gorgeous, right? The chandeliers, the, the, the servers, the um, bartenders, everybody just looks the part. And they're doing things that are not just for the high end, right? So when I say revitalization, they have a workforce project. They're building a community just for people that are in the workforce. So they're not gonna continue to get pushed out of the Greenville area as the area gets built up. Cause that happens in many areas like New Orleans. When Katrina happened, Katrina made it to where it had to be redone right so when they did that people came in they bought them they fixed them up revitalized them and it made it so expensive that the people that had already lived there the natives couldn't live there anymore so they had to live 35 to 45 minutes outside of the area to actually afford and that started to happen here but our government figured that out and they said nope we're not going to have that happen we're going to do our very best to protect our people and they've done a great job with that. So when you're thinking of you wanna be in an area that's gonna hold its value, this would be an area for that. It continues to rise in value for the revitalization, the development, and the fact that they wanna keep their people and their culture protected. Number two would have to be the things to do. The Upstate has an ample amount of things to do, just Greenville has 250 special events or like festivals that you can do throughout the year just in Greenville. That's crazy. So there's things like the March of Dimes that's getting ready to happen at Unity Park. Unity Park, we talked about a little bit earlier, is a great space that was revitalized into green space, a playground. Lots of things to do here like the commons. It has restaurants in the commons. It has a place called Methodical Coffee. It's such good coffee. you got to try it out. There's biking trails. It connects to the swamp rabbit trail you definitely want to check that out when you're in town um, or when you move here there is the falls park which is what do you probably know or think about when you think about greenville south carolina because it's on every picture when you pull up greenville south carolina is the falls or is the suspended bridge and the liberty bridge is what the suspended bridge is it is a great place to relax and hear the falls and see everything and it's tranquil. It has so much more to offer than that because there's lots of festivals that are held there and there's plays like Shakespeare in the Park. 
the festivals are cool. It's not just like normal festivals, like there's the fireworks and then everybody goes home. It's an all day event. The, the streets get blocked off. It's crazy fun. And there's face painting, there's little rides, there's lots of food. The food is phenomenal in the upstate. I'm just gonna tell you. So when you're in the downtown area for our events, you get to get things like artist fair. Cool things happen at the artist fair where people bring their art project, their artwork, and you can buy it and it's from all over and they bring it to the upstate and we get to see it and purchase it and it's gorgeous and they make a whole event out of it. Some of the artists are so awesome they paint or chalk the sidewalks with these crazy beautiful um, artwork that you get to see as you're walking by and it's just a really great experience and it's a great day out. And then there's Euphoria. Euphoria is a lot of fun. Fall for Greenville is probably one of my favorites. Fall for Greenville is held around the 12th of October every year. It's on that weekend typically. The only reason I know is that's my birthday um, and that's an easy one for me to remember. That's not why it's my favorite event though. My reason it's my favorite event is again it's blocked off and then you buy these tickets and you can use the tickets for small portions of different restaurants because then you can try all these amazing restaurants when we talk about things to do sometimes the restaurants here are just amazing to go to when you walk in some of them you're just in awe of the effort and the detail that was just put in the surroundings of it not only the food or the staff and the training it, it's just a really great experience we have the Bon Secours Center, which is called The Well, the nickname The Well. It used to be nicknamed The Bilo Center. The Bilo Center was because it was named after a grocery store chain that was here. They're no longer here, and it was bought out by Bon Secours for the sponsor, and, and that's why it's called that. There are things like Disney on Ice there. There's the hockey team, the Swamp, uh, Swamp Rabbit hockey team. That is a feeder team for the Los Angeles uh, I know it, but I can't think of it right now. Um, if you know the answer to that, put it in the comments and don't don't chastise me that I don't know it. Um, I don't live in Los Angeles and I don't watch hockey, but if you do, I'm sorry. So the next thing would be that they have concerts and they're great concerts and it's not just like silly concerts it's really great concerts and you're gonna have not just country music I promise we're not all playing banjos it's fun there's um there's R&B concerts there are pop concerts there is all genres you could possibly imagine there's even Christian concerts and different things like that it's an amazing experience to be able to go there there's lots of food vendors inside it ample parking throughout the downtown area and it's really inexpensive to be able to go compared to going all the way to Charlotte which is an hour and a half to two hours to some other venues like um, going to Atlanta is two hours to two and a half hours you don't want to do that and you don't have to because there's so much to do here we have the Greenville Drive baseball team which is a feeder team for the Boston Red Sox don't kill me I knew that one but I didn't know about the Los Angeles okay so don't come at me at the comments but I would like to know if if you know which feeder team, the uh, which team it feeds to for Los Angeles and hockey, make sure you're putting that in the comments. It's okay that I don't know. I'm, I, it's just don't don't kill me. So another thing that's here is the Peace Center. The Peace Center is um, an amazing place where you can watch Broadway shows and um, local theaters that play there. I think there's four or five that are local theaters that feed into it, and it's a great experience without having to go all the way to New York and having New York uh, Broadway musicals brought here there's also concerts here now you've had like Chris Isaac and various other people that have been to that and I actually went to that concert and it was really nice um, he puts on a great performance so I promise there's lots here whether you want to be an outdoors person or an indoors person you can even go to camper down camp has things like even axe throwing there's indoor um, bowling there's all kinds of fun stuff to do with all kinds of things for different people, right? So whether you are an indoor or an outdoor, there is plenty of things for you to do in the upstate and especially Greenville, South Carolina. Number three on my list would be weather. I don't like cold at all. It causes me headaches. I know that sounds weird. I have to wear a hat. It's all kinds of weird. My husband calls it a toboggan. It's kind of funny. I know. But I do not like cold weather. So this is a great place for someone like me because we don't have ample cold weather. Last year, we didn't even get snow. Um, the year We probably in the last five years gotten two times, maybe four times it snowed. And 
not ample amounts. Now, when it says it's going to snow, just understand Traveler's Rest section of Greenville is going to get snow. If they, if they even hint that there's gonna be snow, they get it because they're right next to the mountain or they are the mountain. Greenville itself, not so much. Greenville is going to be your safe haven if you like to have majority of nice weather. While it looks kind of gloomy outside right now, it's not. It is beautiful and um, it'll warm up today. Yesterday it was a high of 80. Today it'll be a high, I think, of like 65 or 70. And we're at the end of April in 2024. So what that means is we can wear short sleeves until probably November and we pull them back out in February, which is pretty nice. Well, I will tell you this about it. We do have four seasons in one day though. You may wake up in the morning and it's really cold and then it gets a little warmer and then it gets a little hot and then it gets, oh wait, it's just fall by the evening. So it's kind of a weird thing. So you just kind of dress in layers for the springtime and the fall time in our area. When you're thinking about weather, we do not have crazy snowstorms. We do not have crazy ice storms, but maybe we do maybe one out of five or six years. I've lived here for 20 some years and we've had a couple ice storms that took us out for like three to four days. Wasn't horrible. We've had snow where it was like three to five inches a few times. And I mean, when I say a few, I can truly count them on less than one, uh, all the fingers on one hand. When we talk about weather, we're, I also think, what does rain look like here? You definitely have the April showers will bring May flowers. You have a lot of rain during that time frame, But you have to think, we're South Carolina. There's a lot of farmers here. Where there's rain, there are better crops. And this is a community that is big on healthy. It's on um, homegrown food. There's lots of farmers markets and things like that. And we'll go over a little bit of that in a minute. But weather is a huge thing that draws people to the area. One thing about it, I will say, and I'm going to go ahead and unpack the weather cons now. If you do not like pollen, sorry, um, you're going to have to deal with something with that. So pollen is really disgusting during certain times. In spring here, it will layer your entire car. And when I say layer it, it is like, you can go in, you can have your car wash, go to work, come out at lunch or come out at the end of the day, and you're gonna have a thick layer of that yellow greenish tint all over it. And it's gonna need to be ran through the car wash again. Many people have car washes, um, packages because of that, or they rinse their car off at the end of the day. Um, or it's bad for your allergies. We're not gonna just talk about cars. Cause you know, like in Florida, they have their own ailments. They may not have pollen as bad, but they have those love bugs that will go right on the front of your car and you gotta scrub those off at the end of the day. So while yes, there's pros and cons of those weathers, but at the same token, the weather may cause your allergies to be a little different. So I would highly suggest visiting if you're an allergy prone person during spring to make sure it's best for you. I have ex um, extreme allergies, but to cold, not to the pollen and um, that kind of stuff. I could just take a Zyrtec and Flonase and I'm gonna be fine. So make sure that you're checking that kind of stuff out for yourself, not just saying, oh, it's a beautiful day there, or they have four seasons and that kind of stuff. I wanna make sure it's the right place for you. Number four, and remember when I said that they would be in no particular order because everybody would have one of them that was number one to them. Well, this is one of the number ones to our family, is how inclusive Greenville is for the special needs community. Whether they're young or they're older, they're gonna get what they need in this area. So I'm standing right now for the Center for Developmental Services, and it is a huge thing to our family because at this same counter, 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, I stood with a little toddler with cute little pigtails and big blue eyes and we both had no idea what to do. She got the applied behavioral therapy, which is ABA. She got occupational therapy. She got physical therapy, speech therapy. And then they moved her into the kidnetics. Kidnetics is toddlers and a little bit older. And Kidnetics was phenomenal for our family. Kidnetics got her into the school system, so she got to go to 2K and 3K. She went to Oakview Elementary, and she got to be around children that were not just special needs. She got to play on a playground um, and be included, and we got to be able to not have, you're only gonna go to the center. We got to have a lifestyle that was 
I keep saying the word inclusive, but that is one of the biggest things that a special needs parent strives for. We strive for our children, whether they are two or they're 22 like she is now, to be embraced by the community and love for who they are. And that was what happened here for us. She gets to go now to E210 and David's table over at Rock Creek Church. Um, Keith Finch, who was her middle school and high school teacher at Malden Middle and then Woodmont High School, he is part of that program. And Skeeter and all of those wonderful people have embraced her with open arms and loved her. There are so many things you get in this community that you don't get in other places. I know we tried, we lived away for six months and moved back strictly because of this and the inclusion in this area. We tried to move to Jacksonville, North Carolina. They didn't have anything like this. So when you go to restaurants, we need a music turned down. They easily do that. They have no qualms about it. Even when we have her headphones, sometimes it's hard with certain music. When, when her, one of her friends that are in a wheelchair need extra space, they make the space for them to come through. There's ample parking spots with handicapped spots for them. There's so many things like there's Brookwood Church who has a special friends program. Special friends is phenomenal. The church um, on Sundays has a special friends program where you can bring your children that have special needs of different ages and they have different classifications for them to be able to have them supported where they are. On Fridays, various times through the year, there's different events. There's the hoedown, which is really fun. And it has hay rides. There's the prom that they have. There's so many different things that she gets to be involved in. She would never get anywhere else. So if you're coming to Greenville, or if you're in Greenville and you wanna plan your trip and you wanna plan your day, there's an app now that happened about six months ago. And it's kind of cool. I like the name of it because it's similar to my channel name. My channel name obviously is Living in GVL. And the app is Access GVL. So you're accessing Greenville that you would need in a special needs way. So you're getting to plan it to know everything you need to do for your family. And that's why it's number one to us, but it's four on my list. If you have any questions on how you can include your family in our area please leave a comment below and I promise you I'll get back to you number five would definitely be the economy and the cost of living so they kind of go hand in hand right if you don't have an economy that's thriving then you can't afford the cost of living and the cost of living it makes it to where you can't afford the economy so it's like ah they all got together right so let's first talk about cost of living and the economy in this side the unemployment rate in our area is at 3.6. The national average is at 3.8. Typically, the national average is much higher, and ours does not usually go over 4%, even in major times in our country. So we have had it teeter above 4%, but not drastically above, where when our country will go to 12 and 13%, sadly at times, um, we don't feel that impact is drastically here. Not that it would never happen and we don't have a crystal ball, but it does definitely make a difference on if you wanna live in an area that you know that you have a chance to get a job to be able to afford to live in a home. And the cost of living here is rather cheap with the average price in the 300s to low 400s for our homes. That makes it to where you can have more house for your money than in most parts of our country. Well, the average price of houses typically are over 500,000 in most parts of the country. So if they're having harder times getting a job and the cost of living is higher, it just makes for a mess. And we don't really have that as bad here. And the reason for that is that I would go back to infrastructure. They're creating the infrastructure for not only our roads is what most people think of with infrastructure. They're thinking of an infrastructure of business. They're bringing businesses here. They brought Bosch here, GE. We have Michelin, BMW, Floor Daniel. You name it, we've got them. And when you think of those names, you only think of that. But unpack it some. Those companies are not standalone companies. There are feeder companies that help support them. So there's materials those companies would need. There's houses that have to be built to be able to house the people that um, come over with them that relocate here. There's various things that go along with it. There's cars that have to be purchased. So it is a circle of life that happens when major companies get brought to the upstate. It makes for a good lifestyle. 
We also have big names of businesses coming as well as builders coming. We have now coming back to our area, Pulte. We have Meritage, we have Toll Brothers, we have Trust Homes, we have so many different ones. Again, it's not just that one company, it's the feeder companies that support it that make a difference. So when those builders come, if they use our companies that were already here, like the cabinet companies, or the flooring companies, or the contractors, and we support local, which a lot of them are doing, then it makes it to where we have a thriving economy. Also, when you go to service industries, most people tip well here. So they get paid their um, hourly rate, but they're also getting paid 20 and 30% for their tips. Not everybody tips well, and we will really hope that they just didn't go out to eat that day if they weren't gonna tip well, but they should take care of who's helping take care of them. So you have a thriving economy, you have cost of living low. It's just a great connection when you look at that. Number six on our list would be hospitals. We call them hospital systems here because there's multiple ancillaries of the hospital that go into different offices that you can go into different locations in the upstate. So you have St. Francis Hospital, you have Prisma System, and whether you have needing a needle natal surgeon or you need a heart th uh, surgeon or whatever you may need, you're gonna have great services at any of our hospital systems in the Greenville area. Number seven has to be the arts. Arts are very popular in this area. As far as like Asheville and um, Traveler's Rest and Fountain Inn, but Greenville is a really great hub for that. There's artist fear for the downtown. It's gonna happen in a couple weeks, like at the beginning of May. So if you're gonna be in our area, you wanna check that out. As well as there's lots of galleries. And when we think art, we a lot of times just think that there's clay or that there's this picture. Well, when I was talking earlier about Falls Park and the Liberty Bridge, there's this art um, where they have the Shakespeare, the plays, that's art too. Art comes in different forms and it's fully embraced in the Greenville area. So Greenville doesn't have a shortage of restaurants when it comes to amazing food. That's why it's number eight on our list of top 10 pros of Greenville, South Carolina. Halls is a restaurant that is in downtown Greenville and there is a chain. And when I say chain, don't think of it like it's like Logan's or something like that. It is a phenomenal restaurant that originated in Charleston, South Carolina. Then there went to Columbia. Now there's one in Greenville and there's also one in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you're in Nashville and you're eating at Halls, that just opened last year in 2023, and you're like, hey, I think I know that name. You do know that name, and so you know that flavor, you know that amazing taste, you know the, the deep, beautiful, body, full-bodied wines you can get at Halls. You know that the taste of the steaks and everything's gonna be the same caliber, whether you came here or whether you went to the Charleston market, you're gonna be able to have those flavors. They have a full menu, and you're also on Sunday mornings able to have brunch. It is a beautiful look on the falls and just a relaxing environment. There are two bar areas at Halls. There's an upstairs bar area as well as a downstairs bar area. And the downstairs bar area has a little bit more quiet if you wanted to relax and have a nice drink while you're looking at the Falls. The upstairs area is for more interaction and you can usually hear the band that's going on on I think it's Thursdays and Fridays and some other weeknights. There's other restaurants like there is Rick Irwin's. Rick Irwin's is phenomenal as well. And then there's Nantucket's. Nantucket's is also owned by Rick Irwin. He is a genius. He has the best restaurants. As well as there's Sobeys and there's Nosedive, which has a different owner that owns both of those as well, and some other ones in the area. He's, I think he's co-owner in Larkins and a few others. So there's, Cas uh, there's Passerelles, who has a great cassoulet. There's Limoncello, who's also owned by the same owner that owns Larkins. Um, so when you taste things, you're gonna have delectable food and high standards that you would have at similar restaurants because it's the same owners making sure that when you're having an experience, you're having a true experience of the food tasting amazing, the wine tasting amazing, and the service being out of this world. 
right on the outside of downtown Greenville, you're gonna have places like Chop House 47. Chop House 47 is a great place. It's similar to Halls, but it's a different atmosphere. I feel, think Frank Sinatra without the actual cigars, okay? So you have that music, you have that vibe, the darker look in there. You're gonna have that feel like there should be a cigar. Somebody should be sitting somewhere with a cigar. But we are an area you do not smoke inside at any of our restaurants, so you will not have the cigar in there, don't worry. Um, they may have it on the outside of the hotel of the restaurant, but you would never have it inside. They have wonderful drinks like barrel-aged bourbon for um, for your old fashioned. I don't know why I struggled with that one. That's one of my husband's favorite drinks. They have a Cosmo 47 chef's kiss. So there's lots of places you can go to eat for restaurants in Greenville that you don't want to miss. So as we talked about a lot of the pros of Greenville, South Carolina, one of the cons that we are going to have to unpack is it is starting to grow really fast. There's lots of people. Some of the people that are already living here don't love the influx of that. It makes for crowded traffic and things like that. And there's lack of infrastructure quickly. Infrastructure isn't something that happens overnight. They just spent $5 billion to have the roads and the ramps on 185, I mean 385 and 85 done. And that just finished and it's beautiful and it makes it so much easier. But during that congestion, a lot of people aren't loving that. We don't have a lot of public transit. Yes, we do have some transit. It isn't like a major city. Even as small as things like a taxi cab, you're not gonna just walk out and go hail a taxi. It's not gonna happen, okay? And we do have Ubers and we do have things like that. Some people don't wanna use it and so they don't really love that. Um, and when you're trying to get an Uber, we're in a major city, you would have ample amount. We don't have as many, right? And that's okay for some people. And like I said, these pros and these cons, each one won't hold the same merit for all people. So while this may not be a con to you, it is a con to a lot of people. They don't really like all that growth. So here's another con that a lot of people don't mention and they wanna dance around. I'm just gonna hit you straight forward, okay? Crime rates. Let's go ahead and think about this one though. I just told you throughout this whole video, the infrastructure, the growth and all that stuff. What happens in cities that grow? What happens to large cities? they start to have more people, which is gonna have more crime. We don't have an ample amount of crime. It's not a whore, like, I'm not afraid to walk around, but we're gonna have more crime than maybe we had 10 years ago. We're gonna have a more crime rate than we had 20 years ago. And also sometimes you have to question, do we have a higher crime rate on certain topics or are these things actually being told? Are they actually having somebody come forward? So there's lots of reasons that crime rate actually happens. And so when you talk about crime rate, when you look at Greenville, Greenville is a, like a wide city. So is it Greenville city that's had it or was it on the outskirts of Greenville that it was happening in? And so the whole city of Greenville, it gets lumped in. So when you're looking at it, just understand there's gonna be crime anywhere. There is not a perfect place. There's not, even Disney has things happen at times. <laughs> like there's bad things that happen everywhere, God forbid. But just know that if you take the precautions and if you're doing the things you need to do, you should be in a pretty safe space in Greenville. So a con to some people, which was also a pro to some people, is location. So location is, we are not Atlanta. We are not Charlotte. We are not a city that you can get somewhere in five minutes and do 25 things. We may 15 to 20 minutes and you may get to do five to 10 things, but we're not like crazy like that, okay? So we also don't have a hub airport. We have a great airport, GSP. It's a smaller airport. It has lots of airlines in it. It's easy to get in and out of. I absolutely love it. It would, should have put a, I, I should have put it in my pros and I apologize. And yet it is not an ATL. It does not have Delta's hub. It is not like Charlotte, which I think is American Airlines or United's hub. You're not gonna get a ton of nonstop flights. Now we do have a nonstop flight to uh, LaGuardia. You have it to BWI. You have it to Atlanta, because that's where we're gonna go as our hub. You, 
We'll have a lot of time to lay over to get to Orlando. Some airlines that only last a little bit here for some reason have the straight flights to Orlando, like Breeze or something like that. Um, but you're not gonna have ample amount of them. You'll get ones that have to Detroit. You can get a nonstop to Detroit, no problem. So that's a thing. Location also is a con to some people because they want to be able to get to things pretty quickly. So if they wanted to go to a next con I'm gonna roll into, if they wanna go to a sports game, and it to be a major game, like a professional game. We're, we don't have a pro team. We don't have, the Panthers are all the way in Charlotte, which is an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the traffic. If it's game day, it's probably two and a half hours. We don't have Atlanta, so we don't have the Atlanta Braves. We don't have the Falcons. So that's two and a half hours, sometimes three in traffic, depending on if it's game day. So they don't love that kind of stuff. And sometimes it is annoying, because I mean, I love football. My husband joked yesterday that the draft was on my phone. And he's like, you're getting alerts for the draft. Like, well, whose wife does that? I was like, yours. So it is important, and it is a con at times, and it is annoying. Another con would be touching on the location. We don't have a beach. We're fresh out of them, okay? You can have a mountain. You can have a little bit close by. But a beach? No. Well, we have lakes. It's not the same thing. So uh, lakes are beautiful and it's fun. You can go various things. You can go a regular boat. You can go on a pontoon boat. You can like, motor boating, you know, like everybody jokes. You can go fishing. You can do that kind of stuff. But it's not the same thing as being able to go to the beach, put your feet in the sand, like just relax and hear the waves crash. Some people want to be closer. We chose not to because I'm a little scared about things. I don't want to have to worry about hurricanes. I don't want to worry about natural disasters or flooding. You know, Greenville did have flooding and it does occasionally get flooding. But that was like maybe in the last 20 years I've lived here maybe two or three times and had one major one. But it wasn't enough like say Columbia had in the Midlands or they get a lot of times over on the East Coast where the beaches. So while there's a con with it, there's some pros that go along. So just admit, you have to figure out what is your calculated risk? What is your high level that you're wanting to deal with? Do you want to deal with the fact that you're going to have a risk there or do you want to have to drive? Because it's three hours to get to Charleston for the beach, four hours to Myrtle Beach, and it's four hours to Hilton Head. So the location, when you couple that together, adds to various cons that go along with it. We just decided that the benefits that we enjoy outweigh those cons, but I do see them. Some other cons would be traffic and roads. I put them together for the obvious reasons. A lot of times you're gonna have traffic on roads like Pelham Road or on 85 trying to get on Pelham Road on different times of the day. Whew, friends, it is not fun at times. Woodruff Road, when you're trying to get into Five Forks or even when you're not trying to get into Five Forks, just Woodruff Road, period, is craziness at times. There isn't really anywhere for them to expand it to unless you're gonna run into the buildings, which isn't gonna happen. So that's not really gonna change on Woodruff Road. There's nothing they can do about that. Fairview Road has some of that same situation. Greenville areas, when you have Augusta, you ha that one's like congested and there's not a shoulder to pull off on. A lot of the roads have uh, potholes or need some maintenance in it. They haven't had those happen yet because they were working on things like the revitalization of the bridge on 85 and 385 to make that interchange not get bottled up. So the traffic didn't continue there. So there are things in the works, there's plans happening. At the moment though, I can see how that would be a con to people if they have to keep dealing with that. So there you have it, the pros and cons of Greenville, South Carolina. And if the cons didn't spook you out too much and you're still thinking about making the move to the Greenville area, I'm Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team and we'd love to help you make a smooth transition to the upstate. If you wanna watch videos just like this, make sure to click the one that just popped up at the end of the video.